Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me, Niall Murphy. And here I am, and as you can see, I'm on some kind of a beachy, rocky, craggy, coasty bit. Uh, the sea behind me is very rough, and if I go into the sunlight, um, the sun is a bit low because it's quite late in the day. I like coming out late in the day of late. You probably noticed that, though the angle of the sunlight probably doesn't really work very well for this though does it however it's windy too if I get out into the wind you can see I'm braving the good old British weather that even when it looks nice we still have to deal with being blown into smithereens and this is what it's like so I'm hoping that the audio quality is not going to be too bad in fact I might have to get off the coast and I might have to walk along the path I reckon I think that might be a good idea, but nevertheless, I just wanted you to see this because I do like my locations and check that out, hey everyone? Isn't that nice? Right, so I'm going to get onto the path and just walk back to my car now, I think. Today, as I'm recording this, it's the 5th of July and I'm scheduled to put this out on a 6th. Today, when I woke up early this morning, I saw that I had 901 subscribers and I thought, wow, I've actually got more than 900. I've got less than 100 to go to the 1,000. I'm getting so close at this point. But alas, the numbers stagnated throughout the day. I didn't see it go up to 902 or 903. Now, of course, I'm going to be putting this out tomorrow. So anything I say today might be out of date by then. Oh my God, it's so windy. It's so windy, in fact. I'm having to hold on and grip um, this uh, camera tripod really tight so it doesn't fucking blow out of my hands right oh well oh this is all part of the fun you have to suffer for your art but hey have a butcher's at that hey eh? or vegetarian rhyming slang have a green grocers right so yes so i'm going to ask everyone before i get on to my main topic to please subscribe if you haven't tell everyone about this and help in any way that you can i'm so close at this point to the thousand subscribers and when I get to a thousand it's going to be much easier for more people to find this channel and much easier for my numbers to go up much faster I didn't think I would make it in just over three months that high so I'm grateful to all the pioneers out there who helped us get where I am but just need that last final push man to get to the thousand and believe me it becomes easier after that you know it becomes easier much easier me to promote my videos once I get past there. So today I would like to talk about David Starkey. You may know who David Starkey is but if you don't I'll let you know. He's probably the best repository of knowledge when it comes to British history anywhere in the world or even the universe dare I say. He's a um, historian Academic, come from humble background, is not posh originally, although he sounds it, very much does sound it. Um, and he uh, is one of these mavericks, one of these curmudgeonly old so-and-sos who's not scared to be rude if uh, he needs to be. He doesn't like the woke agenda very much. He thinks it's a load of bollocks, just like I do. Fair enough, you know. But recently he was on um, Darren Grimes' show, Reasoned, and he um, said something which um, has been taken out of context, clearly taken out of context. He's been accused of being racist and he's been cancelled. I think his book deals have been cancelled, his professorship at Cambridge has been terminated, despite the fact that there's an Indian woman in Cambridge who's been promoted, despite the fact that she said lots of very anti-white things, including white lives don't matter, and she was serious and she really actually did say that. David Starkey, said um, something that could be taken out of context and interpreted um, to possibly be construed as racist but um, only if you um, interpret it a certain way he lost his professorship this Indian woman said something that was clearly objectively racist against white people interpretation aside excuse me I'm trying to find my way out this gate yeah um, and she's been promoted so we know what the agenda is at the moment hey everyone we know about this Marxist agenda there we go got through that gate Ooh, hold on 
I'm going to go back and close it, excuse me. Uh, right, so yes, we know what this agenda is. Um, he's going to be uh, put down the memory hole. Um, he's going to be deleted probably from history. His books are probably going to be deleted. They're probably not going to be reprinted. And he's going to be considered to be too racist to exist in history now because that's what the left do. They are intellectually dishonest. They could have given them benefit of the doubt. They could, other people could get them on the show and say, what did you mean by that, David? Did you intend to be um, racist in that comment that you made? And they could give them a fair trial. But no, no fair trials are allowed anymore in this world. You know how it is. So I'll give you um, what he said. He was talking about the difference between genocide and slavery and he was saying that what happened in Africa was not genocide because if there if it was genocide there wouldn't be so many dam he then um, went to use the word dam and the word blacks together in one sentence which basically is the same as when he said um, Greta Thunberg back in a so-and-so century there were so many bloody child sages prophets etc that sort of thing so he when he was just saying when he was saying damn and blacks together he wasn't damning black people he was just saying damn because he's frustrated with all the idiots who can't tell the difference between one thing and another all the academically lazy and intellectually dishonest people that he's had to deal with over the years but he's the sort of person who puts his foot in it when he opens his gob doesn't really care about that and I don't myself either you know and um, just says what he fucking thinks but now they're telling you he's racist and I don't like this man I don't like what they've done to him because he clearly as far as I'm concerned he clearly isn't yes all right he can be rude yes he can be a bit obnoxious to people he don't like or whatever but uh, and yeah all right fair enough there's a few things about him that I think he'd be a bit hard work if I met him but despite that He's a very good uh, repository of knowledge. He's um, very good at what he does, what he knows. You know, his, um, his knowledge of history. Being able to get, get a scholarship and end up in Oxford and become one of the most renowned um, historians in the country, despite being originally from a working class northern background, is no mean feat in a country where the odds are stacked against you unless you're, you know, posh already. So, you know, that's something to bear in mind. So, what I would like to do is tell you a story, my story about how David Starkey um, is connected to Jimi Hendrix and how David Starkey helped immortalise Jimi Hendrix in history. Not really what you would think would be the ways of a racist. No. Now, in order to bring you this, in order to give you the, uh, the, the whole story, I have to go about 240 years before Jimi Hendrix lived in that flat in London. Yes, in the 1720s, in Brook Street, in Mayfair, in London, um, a new development of Georgian terraces were being built. In uh, it was called Brook Street, and it's a few. It's just a few blocks. It's actually gridded. It's actually just a few blocks south of Oxford Street, and it's to the immediate east of Hyde Park and um, to the west of where Soho would be now, although I think it was only fields there at the time. I don't think um, Soho had been built yet. So, George Frederick Handel, who you may know, hallelujah, him, who also did Handel's water music, you know. Something, you know the tune, right? Yeah, everyone knows it. Right, so he lived in 25 Brook Street. I think the numbering order at the time in that street was different. But now it's 25 Brook Street. It has a blue plaque put there um, to tell you that George Frederick Handel lived there. Next door, number 23 Brook Street, sometime in the late 1960s. Jimi Hendrix was his next door neighbor, separated through time by 240 odd years so yeah so you got the, a second blue plaque that was put there David Starkey was on the um, committee panel for English Heritage at the time when they were going to um, you know award that blue plaque and they were all sitting around talking about well you know 
We'd like to give a plaque to someone who was in popular music, but will they stand the, t the test of time? Will people remember them throughout history? This is the one thing that people um, who sit round English Heritage Committee tables discuss. They weren't thinking about whether he was black. His race didn't come into it at all. All that mattered was, is Jimi Hendrix worth um, commemorating with a blue plaque? Um, is he going to go down in time and be considered to be high art? And they come to the conclusion back then, in 1997, that he was um, someone who would go down in history as a musician. Because, I mean, you know, let's face it, he was a very good musician and um, deserves it just as much as Handel does, right? So, I remember the documentary. It had um, Kathy Etchingham was in the documentary and um, she was Jimi Hendrix's girlfriend. She lived with him at the time in that flat. Pete Townsend was in that documentary too. He was the bloke who um, done the speech to officially announce its unveiling, yeah? And um, a whole bunch of people there. Noel Redding, the uh, bass player, who's no longer with us anymore. Bass player of the Jimi Hendrix Experience, he was there. So it was him, Kathy Etchingham, all hanging out with each other. And you got this um, idea back there in the late 90s, all these bunch of old 60s peeps were all hanging out there, having a party, celebrating Jimi Hendrix's blue plaque next to George Frederick Handel's blue plaque. And we have David Starkey to thank as one of the people who agreed and approved it, all right? Now, I think that should, that knowledge should be remembered because no one, and loads of people have made videos about him, um, Demi Rep, also known as Granny Opterix, uh, made a video about this, um, and, but she didn't mention that. I actually mentioned it in a comment. She received the comment and I replied and said, excuse me while I kiss this guy, the well-known Jimi Hendrix misheard lyric. Excuse me while I kiss the sky, All right? There you go. So those people who know, who are in the know, know what that means, right? So, yes, that is something to bear in mind. Not exactly the work of a racist, is it? No. So we've got to thank you, uh, David Starkey for helping immortalize um, Jimi Hendrix and put him in to the history books. When British history looks back and they see that blue plaque up there, on that Georgian mansion terrace, Georgian terrace, sorry, that flat above the shop. I don't know if it was a mansion to begin with. No, it was actually probably just a terrace of houses. Big houses, then. And then it became flats above shops. But this is Mayfair in London, posh area. So it's not like having a flat above a chippy in your average high street. No, right. So I thought I would share that with you today, everyone. I thought this would be some interesting information for you to pass on. And I thought, well, if I, want more, if I want more viewers, then I want my videos to be useful, don't I? So, without any further ado, I think I'm going to make my way home. See you later, alligator. See you soon, baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Also join the Facebook group, follow us on Twitter and now also on Parlour and subscribe on BitChute. It's early days for us yet, so please help this channel grow and it will be gratefully appreciated if you do.